Tati Lashes has fast become the number one lash brand in Europe. Today I'm going to be interviewing the two co-founders and CEOs, Charlotte and Elliot, about how Tati Lashes started and their journey so far. Going from two best friends to over 40 staff members, we're going to be talking through all the biggest challenges and all the tatty tea. Hi, I'm Elia. And I'm Charlotte, and we're the CEOs of Tatty Lashes. We started the brand just over four years ago now. Um, it's a bit of a long story, but me and Elliot have been best friends for 16 years, um, right the way through high school. To be honest, I didn't really know what I wanted to do for a while, and then I got to the point where I was like, I've got to do something. And I loved fashion, I love being creative, I love clothes. Um, not so much now because I'm a, I'm a mum boy, but I used to love putting outfits together and stuff so I decided to go to uni to do a fashion degree um, and it's so mad to think that I don't do anything like that now but there's so many aspects of being a part of Tatty Lashes that I use those skills. Yeah and I think the same for me as well, like I really struggled with what I wanted to do when I left school, like I weren't really like academic at all, I was more no, we, creative going on. No, I don't think we had a GCSE to our names, No, I actually left with no GCSEs, left school, so, um, but I was always good at art. I'd tell a lie, I did, I had one in art, um, but I didn't have any in like English or maths or anything like that, so I think for me I was very creative um, and yeah. I went on to college. Um, we both loved work and though, didn't we? That was yeah. a big thing. We loved earning money and we loved to be creative and we, we've always had that work ethic in us, both of us. Definitely, think. yeah. So, um, me and Elliot both have beauty salons. I had mine for just over 10 years and Elliot had his for all, around the same time as yeah, well. Um, I used to specialise in semi permanent eyelashes, so we used to do classic lashes every single day. It was so busy. It was back to back with clients seven days a week. Um, and I loved doing what I was doing but then I had my first son and I couldn't go back to doing the hours that I used to do. So yeah, so our initial idea was kind of having like a glass cabinet in each salon, like a bit of storage where we could place the products in and people would come in. Like kind of like a mini wholesale. So initially we started off by putting in a thousand pounds and that was to get the brand going basically. So we put four stars into production. Um, God, how bad were the stars at the beginning? Yeah, no, they were the show. Um, so yeah, so we basically done four stars and we got 50 pairs um, and we were just so scared that they weren't going to sell. We ended up doing 1.4 million pairs of lashes. Yeah, which is crazy, crazy to think to about think. because we didn't even think we'd sell like 50 of the four styles that we got. No, definitely not. We didn't think that we would at all. We just thought it was just going to be a small little thing that we could do of a Friday because at the beginning of when we first started, we used to keep Fridays, like dedicate Fridays. So we'd go around to local Liverpool salons. We used to have like a silver <laughs> box um, and we used to put like little stickers on saying Tatty Lashes and we were really made up with this box because we had all of our, like, I think we started off with what? 200 pairs didn't we yeah. and we'd go around and most Liverpool salons or local salons that we went to they wouldn't really get them but there was one time when we did we made about like 100 pounds something like that yeah. when we started getting a little bit busier we needed somewhere to base ourselves and pack the lashes and send them off from so we decided to do it in Elliot's salon um, Elliot had like a little room in the back that we could pack the lashes from so we used to have them all laid out on the floor um, so we used to go around to the post office ourselves. We'd have like a big rucksack of um, orders, wouldn't we? And yeah. we'd be waiting in the queue for about three hours at the end of the day. So people would be behind us, like well, kicking off, wouldn't yeah. they? Um, so we, we'd done that for a while, didn't we? done it for a long time, like doing it like that. And then it got to the point where we outgrew the this, this sun bedroom in the back really quickly yeah. and we decided to um, renovate his cellar in the salon. Had a basement. Yeah, yeah, it was a little basement that had these little tiny dodgy stairs that you'd go down, they were like so, so tiny, these little brick stairs and yeah, we decided to completely renovate it 
and we started getting busier and busier from there, didn't we? Yeah, so basically we used to call it the dungeon, didn't we? Yeah, because it was like, like a dark dungeon, it was like no lights or anything down there, so um, it was just that dingy, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we got down there and we absolutely made up with it at the time because it was like a little working space. Yeah, so about three months in, I'd say now. Um, the business started to grow. We went online, which was a massive help for us. So the orders would come through, we wouldn't have to deal with them ourselves on Instagram, um, and then we'd just pick and pack them. So then we had our first celebrity um, to wear our eyelashes, which was Nicki Minaj, um, which was absolutely amazing at the time. Like, we couldn't believe it. No. I remember waking amazing. up in the morning, it was about like 6 a.m., um, and seeing that we were tagged in her, in her wearing the lashes. And it was just mad. Yeah, it sort of just escalated from there. It just got really busy. Um, and then from that, we had our second um, major celebrity, which was Chloe Kardashian. And then that's just when like, things just went yeah. crazy. The odds were coming in. And we started getting recognition as like a proper brand then. Um, my all-time favourite celebrity is Kim Kardashian. To have Kim Kardashian wearing our eyelashes is literally a dream come true. Couldn't believe it when it happened. It was the best feeling. It was probably my favourite yeah. ever moment like, throughout my career, definitely, is to have a celebrity like her wearing our eyelashes. Yeah, I think as well with Kim, like she's so influential in like the beauty and the fashion industry. It was just like a huge moment for us. We've had so many other amazing celebrities wearing our eyelashes, such as Chris Jenner, Cardi B, um, Ariana Grande. Grande, Paris Hilton, Chrissy Teigen. To see like amazing people like that wearing our eyelashes is just like it's insane, yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. I think so early on as well. It was like it was so surreal. You know, we're just like two normal people from Liverpool and then these Hollywood stars wearing your products, it was just like... You just don't ever think anything like that will ever happen. So it's just, it is a dream come true, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. We were so lucky to get that so early on. That's when it really started to, to the business to grow. My brother Brian as well, he was our digital director. Um, when we started the business, I actually didn't know what he'd done for his job. Um, but he worked for a big company in Manchester. Um, as I said, he was on his computer a lot. That's all to know. But basically, as Tati Lashes started taking off, he started showing a bit of an interest into it to see what we were doing. And I realised what his job role was, which is like digital, digital marketing. And the funny thing was, is Ryan, when we were fairly new in it, Ryan said that basically, if, when we hit a certain amount of money, um, he would leave his job and come and work for us. And and we, we were, were just like, laughing because we thought that would never ever happen. Like, as if, like, it's not going to happen. And then, literally, like, two months in, three months in, we did. And we made him leave his job. He left, he <laughs> like, left his he job. He left his job, yeah. Um, and come and work for us. And I remember we actually drove to his job and picked him up because we had a meeting and he come on it and he was just like, that's it, like, I've just handed my notices in. He handed his notices in, came out, got in the car and it was like, starting a new journey. We went on our first ever business meeting, didn't we? Yeah. The three of us. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm the digital director at Tatty Lashes. Uh, I've been waiting for Tatty Lashes since a very early stage, almost four years now. Um, obviously, within that time, I've witnessed significant growth um, within the brand. Um, I probably should mention as well, I'm Elliot's brother, Elliot's older brother, actually. Um, Bit of a strange when I was started with Tatty Lashes. Um, I started at the, the very start of the digital journey for Tatty Lashes. Um, I was helping out in my spare time, running some paid ads, helping out with the website when I get home from work of an evening and so on. Um, and after about a month I realised, well, we've actually got a scalable business um, and we've got a concept that works. So during that time I was speaking to Elliot and Charlotte obviously really often um, and then we came up with a figure between us that if Tatty Lashes hit, I would leave my employment and, and come and work for Tatty Lashes. It seemed a bit of a pipe dream to be honest and it seemed that something that could happen in a year it may not happen and then all of a sudden within two months we, we hit those revenue goals um, so I came on board and, and, and joined Tatty Lashes team um, and then from then on obviously I've, I've been partial to, to mass growth last time I counted we saw that product in 93 countries um, with the most searched for eyelash brand in the whole of Europe. Our biggest challenges as a brand have, have been globalisation and growing our brand offline as well. We essentially want to be as big offline as we do online. That's where we see um, revenue growth for us. Um, we did achieve that to some extent last year, um, lockdown and COVID permitted. Um, we 
myself and Sarah went over to, to Milan and we pitched to A.S. Watson, who essentially owned Superdrug and all the equivalents of Superdrug throughout Europe. Um, it was like Dragon's Den, to be honest. Um, but at the same time, it, it was really exciting. There was 26 different brands there um, that myself and Sarah had to pitch to. It was really nerve-wracking, but it was exciting at the same time. Um, but it was also really successful because, as a consequence of that, we are now stocked in 700 Superdrug stores in the UK. And we're also in eight different territories across Europe as well, under Ma Marinord and ICI Parry, which is retailed in Netherlands and Belgium. Um, I'm Sarah, I work across the brand on PR communications and brand partnership. Um, so I joined the brand in 2018, um, when it was a relatively small independent lash brand and it's been amazing to see the growth over the past three years. I work predominantly on connecting the brand with like-minded brands and influencers, um, which has led to some really interesting and exciting collaborations. Um, one of the most recent ones with Jamie Genevieve, um, who is one of the biggest UK influencers. And over the course of the last three years, we have grown to astronomical um, rates within the UK and globally. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I think it was harder. It's been um, a few like, tears and tantrums, but yeah, major ones. <laughs> but I feel like now we've got a really good balance. Like we both understand our strengths and weaknesses. And yeah, at one point we were trying to do absolutely everything. So I was stepping on his toes, doing things not the right way. And he was stepping on my toes, doing things not the right way. And we had to have like a, a good sit down, didn't we? And, yeah, and I think at first as well, it was obviously, you know, a change in our friendship as well, because we've gone from being best friends to, them business partners and the size of what the business grew as well like we were dealing with a lot so we had the press the pressure was on basically um, and it could have really went the other way with us like yeah. we were dealing really with absolutely hard. everything though like staff payroll getting the orders out keeping on top of the website but bringing products to the market like it was just Non-stop, so hard. Yeah. yeah, I honestly do think though, like we were always meant to work together. Like it's just the way it's happened. I mean, it's happened. It's just like fitted into place. And I think like if I was to start at the problem with anyone else or Charlotte was off, like it just wouldn't be tatty lashes. Like it's literally a part. No, it hundred percent couldn't do it with anybody else. Couldn't do it on my own. Like he gives me motivation every day to to wanna be a better businesswoman and. And I, I love that about Al. Um, oh, it's lovely. <laughs> but no, it, it's true. I couldn't, I couldn't have a business with anybody else. It just flows, and we've just got really good chemistry, and we just know like the boundaries, don't we? Know, and we've got yeah. really good respect for each other. Um, what I love most about Al is how loyal he is, um, how much of an amazing businessman he's become. Um, he's such an amazing friend, he'd do absolutely anything for anyone. Um, you've just always got me back, haven't you? Yeah. Um, he's like my brother, he literally is part of my family, he's my baby's godfather, he was my man of honour at my wedding. Yeah. Um, I just love him so much, couldn't even say how much I love him. I think like how much of an amazing businesswoman Charlotte is, it's like, I don't think she realises herself, like how good she is and how like, strong and independent she is like she just comes in and like just like puts everyone in the place but like she does it in such a constructive way um, also the main one for me as well as I touched on area is how much of an amazing mum she is um, and a businesswoman like Aww. it's just honestly like she literally comes into work and she's had restless nights and she just cracks on with work and so basically what we've done the best decision was is to like split our roles up and um, so I focused on what I was more good at um, and Charlotte focused on what she was good at and it just works so much like we understand what each other are doing each day we can't moan and say well I've just done this because it's like a set role um, and that's been a, a big thing for us as yeah. to make it work Being so many amazing moments like I couldn't even say there's just been one um, I think the masterclass tour with Jackie Star and Mitchell that was absolutely unreal like to even think we got given that opportunity was just amazing wasn't it yeah I think as well like a lot of 
time went into it yeah. and we planned everything out and it was just like again seeing that vision come to life it was just insane yeah but it's like a, such a surreal feeling like we actually got to like enjoy that one we done all yeah. the hard work norm normally we're on set but we were like no we're booking out we're not like yeah that wouldn't as, be enjoyed it didn't yeah. we it's like and we enjoyed the experience and seeing all come to life because there was like so many months of of planning and preparation and work that had gone into it. Yeah. That was such a, a massive um, milestone for the brand, I yeah. would say. Definitely. We've had so many, like, one of one of my favourites is being featured in Vogue. Um, that was a massive thing for us because, one, yeah, you? it gets me even emotionally even thinking of it because I used to read that read that magazine all the time when I was in uni doing fashion. So to see my brand featured in that, was such such a big moment. There's there's been so many. There's uh, yeah, I think as well. Also, like we've done BeautyCon in LA, um, which was absolutely amazing. Why I love that is because we were so nervous going over to America. And I was thinking, what's the reaction going to be to the brand? And it was just absolutely insane. Like yeah. the you know the yeah, feedback that we had, yeah, like corner, huge right think? around the corner. And even BeautyCon was saying like we could literally had the busiest stand there. So. That was like such an amazing experience. Yeah, we just for us. didn't expect it whatsoever, but it we was... took all of our team to LA, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we flew the whole team over. We done yeah. so many amazing things, like we done an amazing party with PLT. That was that was just unbelievable, that was unreal, wasn't it? Yeah. It was just such a good experience and such a good trip. Like we even done another photo shoot when we was out there where we had pink cars in there, yeah. we had the models in and it was all the most gorgeous tatty lashes. models, yeah. Um, we done it in like a pink um, it was like the pink palace, wasn't it? Um, another amazing moment was when we won the Cosmopolitan Awards for Best of All Style Lashes in 2020. That was amazing, wasn't it? Definitely, and yeah. we got the news when we were all in a market meeting, which was even, it we was even together, more special because yeah. we were all together. So that was that was that was a lovely little moment, wasn't it? I think for us as well, it was like obviously the recognition, which was amazing. But the collection that we won on was actually worked on for two years, yeah. like over two years. Um, which was our filming our fabulous collection. Um, I don't think people understand how much work went into that. Yeah. And I think it was because we developed a new material of eyelashes that was so advanced, you know, that we had so much set back to work at the beginning um, in production. They didn't come out quite right, but we actually made a new material that we brought to the market. So yeah, so I think that was the reward back on that. Initially, we launched that collection just as the pandemic hit. So it was a bit of like the worst time we could have done it, um, but we spent the most time on creating it. So I think finishing off at the end of the year to get that award for that was just like, it made it all worthwhile. Yeah. Another best moment for me would be launching into Superdrug. We actually launched into over 500 stores initially last year, um, and then now we've expanded into over 700 stores. Um, again, that was just a huge moment for us because we was approached by so many different retailers um, at the beginning. So yeah. I'm so funny as well, aren't they? Yeah. Um, but we actually held out as well. Um, and we always wanted super drug and it was always like we always joked about it, especially early on. We were like, we could be in super drug, um, not actually thinking that there was approaches one day. So I think for us that was like such a big moment. Yeah. Um, the quality of the product we had, you know, to that level where we were ready to go in store and go offline. So yeah, I think that was like one of my best moments for sure. Yeah, I just think keeping up with the demand um, was really hard um, down to dealing with stock and production. Um, it's either overspending on production, getting too many units, or underspending and not having enough units. So I think that was really a tough one. Um, as we've grown now recently, we've got um, like a head of warehouse operations, which makes it so much easier. But I think initially for the first two to three years, um, that's something that yeah, really that was a struggle job with. Um, it was like a full time role in itself. Um, I did make some mistakes even with launches, not having enough units in and stuff like that. But I kind of done what I could do. Um, in, to a sense. Yeah, you've you done absolutely amazing. Like, there's not a chance on earth I could have done that. Like, it just but, blows my mind <laughs> how we how we got to deal with that for so I, long. I think as well now because we've got like over 150 products. It, it's a lot. Um, on how long each unit's gonna last, um, especially with having no background and that. So I think that was definitely a struggle for me, but I feel I have learned so much um, from that. Um, I've made so many mistakes, and I think if you don't make any mistakes, you're never gonna learn. 
dealing with the other assets of the business that we're not knowledgeable mm. in now that we've got staff in. Yeah. And um, we've kind of, which was hard at first, is like letting go of yeah. certain roles because you've done it for so long and you've done it your way. It mightn't be the right way, but you know, it works. Yeah. And we've kind of had to step back in certain areas, even though like, we still check in a lot. With having two boys that's still only really young, I want to be there as much as possible for them, but I still want to work and show them like how important work ethic is. Um, I think one of my biggest challenges is when we go travelling. Um, that's quite hard, isn't it? I do have like little breakdowns every now yeah, and then. Yeah, for work, like it's, it's hard because often you miss the kids. Yeah, but... I've got to be away from them and like, um, Two years ago, it was a big year of travelling for us. Like we had the the masterclass tour. We went we went to LA a few times. Like we went everywhere, and I had to do it for the business. It was, I, ha I had to do it. There was no way I couldn't do it. Um, so that was that was really hard to try and do that. But now I feel like I've got that good little balance now where I get to spend as much time with my family and I get to put all me like everything into work as well. I've got a, an amazing husband who's really good you know he helps me with everything with the work and with the kids and stuff so for me i feel like everyone who we collaborate with is so authentic anyway like we never just go in with a collab on someone that we don't believe in as a brand or we don't commonly work with we tend to work with people who we've got relationships with and um, or who's you know a good person for the brand so it's a hard one to say which ones but i've got so many special moments from each collab um, obviously Mitchell was our first collaboration that we've done and um, we've actually done two collaborations with Mitchell. We um, first met Mitchell when he was only 17 so he was only starting out um, and then he became such a big part of the brand and we launched TL Mitchell 1 and then we went on to the second collaboration um, with Mitchell 2 so I feel like that was such a special one for the brand being our first one that we did. Um, also Molly May's collection. Um, I love that, it was really stripped back as well, um, down to the packaging, it was something that we'd never done before, it was like more black and white, um, which our brand's obviously pink, so that was something different that we'd done. Every collab that we've we've done has always been a little bit different, when we worked with Jamie, Genevieve, the shoot was really grungy wasn't it, it was something that we'd never done before, yeah. but it turned out to be probably one of my favourite videos that we've done. Yeah, it was quite quirky, it was like, yeah. rather than being all like, Girly, yeah, glam, yeah. it was like a little bit more rock chick. Yeah, it, it, really, like... it really showed their personality um, in the video, so that was amazing. My favourite collab, I'd say, is working with PLT. We've brought two ranges out with them now, haven't we? Yeah. And our second collab, I think that was probably my favourite one. Like, Definitely. Yeah, that was so good, wasn't yeah, it? I think it was amazing, like even down to like, the shoot and just the way everything flowed. The packaging, flowed. Like... the names that we have for the, for the lashes, like everything was just dead. It was lovely, wasn't it? It was funky. A lot of work goes into it, so we basically start initially from the product, and um, what type of product we're bringing out. If it is a collaboration, it's working with who we're collaborating with, on what style of eyelashes that suits their personality, what styles they like. So then we'll sit down with the marketing team and we'll come up with like a 360 strategy of how we're going to launch the campaign. We work on all the creative then, and like we'll do like loads of mood boards for the shoots, um, then we're looking at outfits and like wardrobe and makeup and yeah. hair and it's just there's so much involved in a shoot. Yeah so it's so important to get the team evolved from the get go. Putting in the strategy of Charles just touched on um, and then really coming up with like a strong marketing campaign of how we're going to lead it. We do get a bit stressed don't we but we always do pull it off like even one of our collections we literally it landed into the office and into the warehouse the day before it went live so we were just yeah, so lucky was <laughs> like it was a nightmare like to be honest with you but that's us isn't it like yeah we just kind of like just go with it just gotta like, wing it yeah. and just make the best out of a bad situation maybe you then. use that line a lot don't you like yeah. you wing it so much yeah. with certain things but that's just how fast paced certain things are and you've just got to not and go smooth no, no matter how much you plan and you prepare before bringing out a range or collection you will be so or a new product like there's I'm always at some of the stuff that's actually happened to yeah. us is like mad but you know we just expect it now so you've got all kinds of like pre-plan for something going wrong no matter how prepared you think you are like we'll start working on something eight nine months before there will always be little things that crop up but even though we would like to, it's just hard. Like we try to do this 
a while back and just couldn't do it properly, no. could we? Um, so yeah, it is a little bit hard. Like I don't think I want to be doing it all the time. I think it's like a, a one-off. Yeah, you I, do it more than me. <laughs> I think like I think when it comes to like speaking on camera and stuff, we both get really nervous and like we can just say like our whole story so easily but when the camera's turned on it just like yeah. we just freeze a little bit but it, we're just happy with like being behind the camera you know yeah. and working on the brand i feel like it was just so important to tell our story and to show that like from the outset everything looks perfect when it's not like we've made mistakes yeah it's been up and down it's been a, a full roller coaster from the minute we started Definitely. we never ever thought that we'd be on this journey at all and i think we? like with that like with the setbacks you know you've just got to keep going which trust me we've had so many setbacks yeah. and you know it feels the worst thing at the time but you've just got to keep going on and and things do get better and things do get easier but i just think if you don't take chances like we never done this yeah. like it was so close we weren't going to go ahead with it yeah. because we weren't confident enough and that's it like, what was all what would we be doing now because this is all ours and this is our passion and it's something that we just absolutely love